Brett. This is gonna be not exactly about work with Brett. I wanna talk a little bit about this room. I am currently in the highly debated storage tool room. So this is all one very, very, very solid structure. This right here is the lazarette in the cockpit. And this is where about 90% of our tools have been stored. Now our tools are actually more center aligned and lower in the boat than they used to be. And they're all in one place. So yes, we did add a little bit of weight with the toolbox, but they were in toolboxes before. So not a huge weight add but a huge add in productivity. Before, if we ever had to do any sort of project, repair, anything, we would have to end up going into here, which then we had like five different DeWalt totes we had to dig through. Plus we had some under some of the couches, the settees that we'd have to dig in. Sometimes there was stuff in the bilge and there was stuff just kind of strewn everywhere. It is now full of tools and tools and tools. And this is absolutely incredible. That wall sits in the groove up in the top, it is then screwed to this base and to the base on the other side. So realistically, that wall can't go anywhere. Uh, same with this one. This, the bolt's going through here. This is also three quarter inch ply, but then on the other side of this, the where I mounted the toolbox going through it is a like a two by two solid piece of like teak and that runs all the way across the entire length of the boat now obviously there is some problems with having a toolbox it's heavier than just a plastic tote or a roll even can rust it can rattle so it's not ideal there's pros and cons to everything same thing goes with this fuel tank here this fuel tank is better mounted than the one that is in the boat which is actually underneath that bed over there so you're sleeping the same distance from a fuel tank whether you're in that bed to this fuel tank versus the one that you're literally laying on top of. It is a marine fuel tank that is a, I think it's called Molar 50 gallon tank. It is ABYC, it's Coast Guard approved. Also that fuel tank is pretty much dead center line, about as center line as you can get, more center line than the one on the starboard side. We're talking a lot about kind of weight and balance, moment arms. I remember learning how to fly a Cessna just with my seat by being able to trim out the plane perfectly and then leaning or sliding my seat forward and back to be able to climb, descend, and turn all without even touching the controls. This is a lot of weight aft. When we do all of our provisioning, we are gonna be putting all of our canned goods, at least as many as we can, more forward, which should help balance out the boat. Also, we will be mostly using the forward water tank and keeping this one empty. For the most part, our boat is dead nuts level. We drove around the anchorage in the dinghy the other day and looked at our boat comparing to pretty much every other boat, uh, with the exception of some of the catamarans, not all of them our boat was the most level and we've been very careful about trying to keep our boat level so that we don't have too many bad healing forces or listing and for the most part it's just more comfortable to be on the boat when it's level to walk around it makes it nicer we've done some additional adds to this room got a gear hammock this is actually the mattress that fits right here it's just kind of strapped up to be out of the way all in here is cleaning supplies and then this is just kind of the shelf of randomness that hasn't found a home yet these still need to get bolted down this needs to get strapped down but it has a lip so it can't just slide off this room is awesome took out this wall right here pushed this back this is now storage under here better access to the engine now which is really nice on the other side in the other room we are going to be putting a second freezer there are some permanent changes like obviously i had to drill a big hole for the fuel tank fill and i cut this wood right there. If for some reason we really decide we don't like this or we really don't want the fuel tank there, uh, it would not be hard to go back and kind of undo what we've done. The next projects we have going on are going to be pretty quick projects. We've been doing things that need to get done, right? We needed to mount this toolbox. We could have left things where they were, but it, that just really wasn't practical. We wanted more fuel, that is now mounted. Believe it or not, we don't want to be in project mode all the time. I'm gonna jump in and replace the air conditioner. The air conditioner is one that came with the boat and we killed it. It just ran frozen for too long and cooked the compressor. You don't normally need an air conditioner on a boat, especially a sailboat. We want to be able to go out, we want to go spearfishing, we want to go exploring, we want to be able to leave the dogs on the boat. We were thinking we would just leave the cockpit open, we would maybe even lock them outside because they're great dogs, they love being outside. The problem is that Penny is a little huntress. She will chase something that she really wants to hunt. Here it's been iguanas, but our fear is that she might jump in after something and there might be a shark in the water or maybe she jumps in after a shark to go say hi till we can maybe train her or figure out a better solution to keep her from jumping off the boat. We're gonna have to lock them inside and that means we're gonna need to keep the boat cool enough that they are safe and that they're comfortable. So backing up a little bit, a bunch of you guys are commenting about needing to add minerals into our water because of how pure the water gets when it goes through the membranes of the water maker. Now I probably wouldn't have paid attention to like all of the comments about minerals, but I have recently been working really hard to 
to remineralize my enamel. It got super messed up when I was sick, and so I've been trying to kind of regain everything that was lost, like my hair thinning and my enamel getting bad and sensitive. And so I've been remineralizing my teeth, and it's working really well. And then, like, the special toothpaste. All that, all this, is to say that we took you guys very seriously when you mentioned having minerals in the water, which is where Care Of comes in. So Care Of is a subscription-based service that sends you supplements or minerals or vitamins, whatever, all of those good things based on your current needs, based on the tests that you take. So it's individualized, it's specific for you. For my test, I got calcium, we got vitamin D, I've got gut check, got some plant protein, that's good, has my little name on it. And as you can see, it all comes in these pre-packaged, individualized little things for daily use. Normally we do everything we can to avoid prepackaged things on the boat. But what's nice about Care Of is that they use clean ingredients for their vitamins and then they put it in a compostable little pack, which means that it can go out with any of the other compostable organic things that we have going on, on the boat. Care Of is great because you can take that test, you can update your test as life changes so that it's specified for you, which means no matter what phase of life you're in, you can get something customized for you, and if you guys use our code, which is EXPEDITION50, you can get 50% off your first order. Go check it out and take the quiz. I can go. I need to take this table out. We took out the old table, and then I think Jade by herself put in this new table, these new table legs, and the idea was to be able to take these out and be able to drop the table down so we could watch movies and stuff like that. But the problem is that this is like super shaky. It's awful. And then while I have this out, I'm gonna access in here and do some replacements and then put the old table legs back in. Uh... That was supposed to be like super easy. It wasn't. This is where we are. Can you guess what we're doing? We are getting rid of this and replacing it. That is original as far as I can tell. It is very rusty. It worked for us last winter and I'm pretty confident we killed it because we were trying to use it in freezing water and there were multiple times where it, the intake got frozen. I tried with some technicians, tried replacing some capacitors, some different things and it's done. We probably could throw parts at it and get things to go but the biggest issue is that it's so rusted. At the end of the day, it is from 2008 and it's done. I'm assuming they did it this way so that these hoses go nicer. I'm gonna try putting the new one here and see if I can still make the hosing work. And in case you don't know what this is, this is an air conditioner and heat pump. This is a Cruise Air slash Dometic 18,000 BTU. They don't make it anymore. The one I got was a 16,000 BTU, but it's newer. So I'm hoping even though it's 2000 less BTU because it is newer, should be more efficient, work a little better. Here's the new shiny, Marinaire. So this is a 16K BTU. You can see how like a, uh, a little hush shield all around it. Should be a little bit quieter. I know it'll fit right there. It'll fit there great. Might even be able to take this thing off and mount it onto there. But I really would like to be able to use this space for maybe a fridge or storage or anything. Because right now, this, this is pretty much impossible to get to. It's super hard. It'd be nice to put the AC here and be able to use that. The problem is if I try and use both these hoses, this hose here would have to do like a 180 to come back, because uh, I don't think I can have it come up. I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna put it in here and then we'll mess with this because I think this can rotate any direction. So we'll put it in here and kind of see what we think. <sighs> All right, this thing's pretty heavy. Not as heavy as that one, but still pretty heavy. Uh, okay, so it will fit here. It does fit and it does feed this duct pretty easily, really easily actually. So I think I'm just gonna put it here uh, I tried both ways and really it only works if the vent is kind of underneath this ledge and just goes like that. So it should be really efficient, should be able to pump really easily. I wonder if I rotated that. If I rotate this, slide it all the way over and slide it all the way through. I'm gonna try that one real quick. Jade is grabbing our fridge because she's feeling exceptionally strong right now. Our extra fridge freezer, and she's gonna, we're gonna pop it right here and just see how it looks. What we could do, if we need to, is just kind of disassemble it. 
use even the lid and the compressor and just kind of put in extra foam insulation. That's an option. It's a good option. That looks so small now that you're holding it. Um, you First make it. I can't carry you, it. No, you make it. Now look, I make it look small. You make it look easy. It's tiny. See, doesn't that look so small now? I think we should get a big. So that's an option. This is uh, this is from Bouge RV. If you remember this, this is from when we road tripped out here. It's a 12 volt or 120 volt. We've been using it kind of our, as our spare fridge, drink fridge. What? Decision making. Oh, not talking to me. No, I'm not talking to you. All right, doing one step at a time here. We have this, it's not mounted, so I guess that's like step zero. Uh, this is sitting here. I can go. What are you doing, bud? I have it all wired except the pump is unplugged. Uh, so when I turn it on, the pump isn't even gonna try and run. I'm just gonna flip on the circuit breaker and we'll see if it tries to power up. There might be something in the manual saying to do something first, but let's see what happens. Turn it off. I'm gonna turn the string breaker off. Might have to read the manual on how to use it. But the fan blows a lot. It's really quiet. The compressor kicked on. So we're miles ahead of the last one. I do have this. I don't know if you guys have ever used one of these. I've never used it, but this is my hope is for the drain. Is that this is a little Venturi, I guess you can call it a pump. And I'll put it in line here on the discharge and this will suck by making, you know, a little uh, Bernoulli's principle there. We'll create a suction down here. I'll have to change the fitting out down there so that it attaches here. And it should suck out all the condensate. Hopefully it works. In my haste and excitement to try out this front AC, I totally forgot about the rear AC. There's two hoses that come out of that pump. One goes to the front AC, one goes to the rear AC. A few months ago, trying to get this one to work, I cannibalized the rear AC, which means as soon as I opened up that valve and definitely once I turned on the pump, seawater just pumped into the rear of the boat. I'm not even, I don't even want to go look. Uh, I should go look. Wow, I did get that lucky. Tells me two things. One, I got lucky. Two, I didn't get that lucky because that means there wasn't water actually pumping from that pump. If I had dug into the pump controller box, I probably could have traced the wire to see which one was which. Figured I had a 50-50 shot, and sometimes I'm lucky. I think I was unlucky this time, so my guess is that the pump was actually running backwards. So I'm gonna flip those wires and we'll try it again. All right, I don't know if this GoPro is gonna keep working. It's so hot right now that it actually burned me trying to take the battery out. Not actually burned, but it hurt. Got that rear AC tightened up. Let's try this again. All right, Penny. Pump is running. Right now it's just blowing air out of there. It feels really nice. Here it goes. Ooh, that's nice. While we're doing a little bit of testing, 1200 watts. That's pretty good. That's a lot less than the last one. The last one pulled, I wanna say it was like 1600, 1500, 1600. That's pulled pumps. Oh, and the fridge and charging laptop. So it's actually probably less. It's actually probably closer to like a thousand watts uh, for just the AC. It's pretty good. I'm, yep. I wasn't completely convinced that I would like the cool lights that Brett ended up installing in the forward cabin when we ordered them. I'm like, they might be too blue, but they're not. They actually were great for the boat because we've got so many of these warm tones with the wood and then this warm cream of the couch cushions and the cool light actually I feel like balances the whole space and brings that warmth down a little bit, which I like. So the next step is to continue the process and install them everywhere else. We're going circle, 
pretty modern. And replacing this little one right there. I think Brett has actually done most of the electrical on the boat. I feel like when we divide and conquer, he always conquers the electrical because he's good at it and has experience. So time for me to catch up. The new connectors that we got that are supposed to fit these wires are slightly too big. So what's happening is when I crimp them, it actually doesn't crimp, so the wire just slides right out when you're in a bind. We just fold it over the metal part so it's thicker now. And should work. Did you crimp one already? Yeah, it didn't work. Oh. Uh, putting a shackle on our anchor swivel. That's one of those things that we should have done in the beginning, but that was right before Hurricane Henri. And we threw it on real quick and it's been fine. We haven't used it a whole lot because we've been on, oh no, we've used it quite a bit, but um, before we were on anchor like permanently for the next several years, we definitely want to put a shackle on there. So I'm gonna go throw a shackle on, I'll mouse it and move on to the next to-do list. This is from Navi safe and we learned about it at the Annapolis boat show and then later did we do we buy this or did this get sponsored? We bought it. Now we bought it. Order. Regardless, it's really awesome. Navi safe. And this will glue onto the front of the bimini. It'll stick onto our inflatable section. And then if you can see right there, that is a GoPro mount. Here I can show you. The GoPro can go on this and then it can film us while we're doing it. And then We'll have hands. Oh, safety first, but also footage for you guys. Hey. It takes a full 72 hours before it gets a full bond, but I've got it on there. However, pushing it, there's too much give in the dinghy tubing. And that is because tonight is actually quite a bit colder than it has been. So it's cold, the molecules have constricted, and so now our dinghy feels a little bit less firm. I got the strap nice and firmly on this, so it should. Keep it on nice and tight. Oh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna put this as you might be able to imagine, getting this level doesn't involve a level because boats move and they're hardly level. And I'm sitting on the port side of the dinghy right now, so it's a little lower than the other side. Everything on a boat's curved to an inch. Okay. What do you think? Does it look great? That does look great. Okay, cool. Rather than go mess with the dinghy because we need to let that forward light dry, I am going to start doing some long-term storage stuff for food. I just cut a vacuum bag. I got a vacuum bag sewed in there. I'm gonna fill up, we have this tote of dog food. I wanna see if I can fill up a bunch of these bags and put them in the bilge. I think I'll be able to get way more food in bags in the bilge than in that tote. Give this a shot. I'm gonna try this. I have it up now. 
Uh, I think what happened before is when I actually clamped it down, it cut it a tiny bit. So it couldn't ever actually pump all the air out because it kept sucking air in. of dog food. What do you think, Dingle Boy? Well, I am impressed and disappointed at the same time. So this one, this is the first one, first big one I did, and it has now broken seal. I don't know why. This one looks like it might be. This one looks like it probably is. This one definitely is. Tried doing it smaller and I double bagged it. The only thing I can think is that when the food gets compressed, it gets a little bit sharp. It's kind of a coarse texture. I just feel like they shouldn't be, I don't feel like I'm doing anything crazy. We're in my favorite location back here in the starboard Lazarette with all of my uh, awesome new fuel fittings. See you guys. Fits through the companion way. And then we're gonna provision. Yep. Hold this bad boy up. He's the organized one of the two of us, and he used to be significantly more organized when we started dating. I've ruined him. His car was always clean, his toolbox was always perfect, and then this chaos entered his life. This chaos. This chaos. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, good, except for I went to lower it. Yep, I didn't see you talking really loud. Yeah, uh, I guess what happened? You went to lower what? The anchor, so that I could put the shackle on it. Where's the anchor? 